following Bernando Lopalo, a conversation with Greg Scott. This was taken from a live stream recording done on Facebook in 2018. Gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to have member Greg Scott with us today on this member conversation. The aim of these conversations is to allow you to get some insights into what it was like meeting Bernando in person and or if you didn't get a chance to meet Bernando in person, you may have seen him on YouTube or read his books and what kind of impact he had on your life. Now, in this case, Greg um, attended an event way back in 2013 when Bernando was in New York City for a promotional book tour and birthday party since he was about to turn 112 years old. And uh, we had a talk at Stanton Street Yoga, which is a little yoga studio within Sanctuary Guest Suites down on the Lower East Side. And Greg was one of the members who attended. We have stayed in touch uh, over the past five years uh, from that event and, you know, through Bernando's uh, demise. And I'm very, very grateful to have you here today, Greg. Welcome. Glad to be here. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> well, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Greg, so you just celebrated a birthday. I wanted to wish you a happy birthday again. And Thank you. You're welcome. And you want to tell everyone how old you are and how you're feeling? So, uh, chronologically, I am 46 years old. Um, however, I feel most days a lot younger than that. Um, and actually, I recently got a compliment. Um, they didn't actually even know how uh, old I was. So that made me feel good. But uh, yeah, so that's my current age. Yeah. And you live in New York City, which is the same city that Bernando lived in for 90 years. He, he uh, Harlem was his stomping grounds. How do you feel about uh, your health in a city that's got plenty of stress and plenty of pollution in it? How, how is the Bernando method working for you in the city of New York, pre and <laughs> post? How would you compare how you felt before and, and after? Um, I would say that uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, uh, I, I was actually born and raised in Harlem as well. Um, I currently live in Brooklyn and uh, I've lived on four out of the five boroughs of the city. So I guess, uh, yeah. Um, but as far as uh, things that uh, Bernardo um, Grandpa has, uh, you know, gone over with, um, it's just been really great and inspiring to, uh, you know, follow a lot of the methods and just to um, to see a, a living and legend at the time, um, you know, to actually do it. You know, it's one thing to read a book. It's one thing to, you know, see a video. Um, but it's, it's even more inspiring if you had the opportunity to see the person in person. And now with the next generation with you uh, uh, carrying a torch. Oh, well, thank you. Well, I just to back up a little bit, I, I wanted to, for the sake of everyone here, ask you, how did you hear about Bernando in the first place? That's a great question. So I first heard of Bernando uh, actually in the year 2001, which was his actual 100th um, birthday. Um, I, it was pretty simple. I was actually uh, getting ready for my normal work from, for the morning to go to work. And I had the um, Today Show on and, you know, Willard uh, Scott, he normally would do the birthday announcement. And I, I just happened to turn that way and um it was everything happens for a reason i guess and so i saw 
uh, he gave a shout out to Bernando and he looked a lot different um, than a lot of the other people that were a hundred years old that on that day. Um, just uh, nowhere near a hundred um, looking at that, at that time. So that kind of intrigued me. And then, you know, it was just more of a footnote. Um, uh, and I just, you know, went on about my day. And then there were other challenges that went on that following year. Um, and then following after that, um, some years after, I just uh, connected on YouTube and and then I, I started watching a lot of the videos and so forth. And then um, I can't remember if the site was up, the Age Less Live More store site was up yet. I think it had just launched. And then I um, was interested and I, I just, again, just kept going over the videos and uh, just different content. And then I got the, I purchased the first book. I, I purchased the first book as an ebook. Uh, I think it's on Lulu or something like that. It's All of Bernando's books are available on lulu.com. Stay tuned for the end of this video. Com, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I read that book uh, three times, actually the same day. <laughs> you read it three uh, times in the same day? Yeah, yeah, because it was it was just, it, well, one is a quick read. It, it, it's so like, it, it's literally just like when you're reading the book, it was just like you're, he's talking to you. And so I was, and there was a lot of, you know, information. So one, that's just a method for me. Like I'll, I'll just read something or watch something and then I'll just take it as it is. And then I, I'll digest it and then I'll go over it again and so forth. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. I mean, okay. Well, you just said so much. I'm going to go back and <laughs> ask you some questions that popped into my mind as you were speaking. So going back to Willard Scott, you were saying that Bernardo didn't look a lot like the other people that were on the show. So mm -hmm. I actually have never seen this Willard Scott show. I heard about it, but I, you know, I don't really watch morning television. Mm -hmm. So did Willard Scott have photographs of these people? I mean, or... Yeah, he, he would usually like have a headshot. So it was usually like about uh, about two minute segment because um, Willard Scott was actually Willard Scott was the original uh, Ronald McDonald. Uh, oh, and, how ironic. And, yeah, I know <laughs> it was we're talking about healthy food and healthy lifestyle. But yeah, that that is the case. He was um, the original Ronald McDonald. And then he actually was, became a broadcaster and then he was famous for doing the weather and so forth. And then um, he always, somehow he came up with this uh, tribute to honor people that were a uh, hundred years old. I'm gonna call attention to Willard Scott's book, The Joys of Reaching a Certain Age, The Older the Fiddle, The Better the Tune. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I just, I was just doing my normal uh, activities in the morning, getting ready for work. And because um, I, I would watch the Today Show, just kind of, you know, see what, what was going on for the day. And I came on and um, I saw Bernardo, like I said, he was, you know, you, you'd see his beaming, like, smile. Smile. And, and um, smile. it's yeah. just, there was no, no wrinkles or anything like that. And so, um, yeah, it just intrigued me. And then I just continued for, to, to, to research. Um, and he, he, he favored a little bit, both in sound and uh, a little bit of look like uh, another family member. So, uh, yeah. I see. Do you remember, just out of curiosity, do you remember who the other persons were who were featured that day or he was only doing one person at a time? No, no, he. The, I don't remember the names, but um, the, you know, there's usually, I don't know, maybe five or 10, you know, whatever, you know, people, I guess, send in as, as a tribute. Um, so I, I don't recall the other names, unfortunately. Mm. Um, yeah, well, that's mm -hmm. that's amazing because I didn't even know that that had occurred. Thanks to you, mm -hmm. I do, because over the years, there have been many, many people who had suggested that, you know, I submit grandpa, you know, for that. But it turns out, um, mm -hmm. so now it is, June of 2013 and 
you are at sanctuary guest suites and you're in the presence of this person that you have been following for mm -hmm. about 13 years. A few years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was so it I, like to, to actually see him in person? Was there a big difference between the person you'd seen on the Willard Scott show and the man you were listening to give a lecture on health? No, no, there actually was no difference. Um, and I, I would just say that, you know, you know, uh, uh, just just really vibrant, just really uh, energetic and um funny just the whole this whole persona and um and uh yeah it was an experience inspiring so i you know i had been you know doing a personal transformation anyway um just in healthy eating and living and just trying to um you know just get better at certain things and so um but i was doing it more with with exercise and then um, I just focused on more of the food style as well as some other um, stress options, um, mm. which is amazing. The, the mental um, and uh, physical and emotion part is very important as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's how I got started with that. And then I just, uh, again, you know, followed Bernando and maybe like one or two other people, but um, it was just really inspiring. Like I had in my own family, um, some people that lived in the upper 90s, and then maybe I think mm -hmm. I had somebody who was in the 100s um, as well. Um, but you know that that was maybe you know a good two decades prior. Mm -hmm. So to see see somebody you know relatively recently like that, and just even even my I think it was my grand aunt, she. Um, she was still up there and she would talk clear and everything like that, but she wasn't able to move as fluid as Bernando. Mm -hmm. And so, so it was just like to, to see all, I mean, like, you know, I, I would see certain things on the, on the, uh, if you, if, if anybody looks on the YouTube and watches the, uh, the three videos where he does the salad, the, uh, fruit bowl and, and, and it's, the it's, barley. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. He looks nowhere near. And that's the first thing that I always say to everybody before I even say, you know, how old he was. I said, you know, how old do you think this person is? It's like, I don't know. It's like in his late 60s, 70s. I don't know. I was like, you know, that's good. That's good. But he's nowhere near that. He's, you know, well into his, you know, hundreds. He was in his 109th year when he made that video with my brother mm -hmm. and i will say that actually he had suffered a stroke before that made that video because uh there was there was uh, a great personal there's stress and his you know his wife at the time georgette uh had been hospitalized and he had been going to the hospital every day, spending two hours there to make sure that she was being taken care of properly. Because the tragedy is that so many people face when you're supposed to be in care, you know, that you're even paying for, that they will leave you in your own urine and your own stool and, you know, not take care of you properly. And once he caught wind of that, you know, a couple of days in, he made sure that he was there every single day to make sure that she was all right. And, you know, it was a very distressing situation for him. And as a result of that, he wasn't sleeping. He was not sleeping well, uh, was not sleeping through the night. Uh, I think I remember later him saying that he had been... I don't know, up until, you know, like two, two o'clock in the morning. I mean, he was always an early riser, but he was really having difficulty with that. And as a result of that, he ended up having the stroke. And, but the thing about him was, is that he was so lucid, he knew he was having a stroke. So he got on the phone and he called a, a friend of his, a nurse practitioner and said, hey, I think I'm having a stroke. Could you come over here and take me to the hospital? 
at 108. <laughs> and so they did, and they took him to the ER and, you know, stabilized his situation. And, you know, he was slightly paralyzed, you know, on one side, which will happen when you have a stroke. But, mm -hmm. you know, because he knew so much about massage and about circulation and acupuncture and, you know, these different, so many different things, he just applied right. it to himself. So he made sure mm. that he got massages and that he got the acupuncture and gradually, you know, the paralysis and everything from the stroke subsided. But if you look very carefully at that video, you can detect that one side of his mouth is, is drooping a little bit more than the other side. But for the average viewer, they mm -hmm. have no idea. So this is something that is noteworthy and remarkable about him it was his depth of understanding of the importance of addressing a, a health crisis you know an issue immediately and applying the appropriate wisdom applying the appropriate techniques to address that and to correct that because he would always say when he was talking to someone well if they asked he would say yes you know things can be healed things can be corrected depending on how far gone it is you know if you wait too long you know and if you wait until an organ is has died you know is on death's door well there's not really much you can do at that point because it's 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 atrophied it's past that point but if you catch something at the right time then you are able to intervene you know that's the point of, of medicine and to redirect and to help put that organ or whatever it is back on course to allow nature to heal itself you know with the right foods with the right herbs with the right you know treatments in this case it was acupuncture and um, massage and this is something that has just made a huge impression on me because it attests to the power of it attests to the power of god working through nature absolutely I, i'm gonna i'm just gonna say this and let you continue talking but this is something that is just electrifying for me because this example just solidified my faith in uh, this process. If you have the wisdom, of course, to apply things properly, that is a disclaimer here. You have to understand, you have to have the depth of knowledge to understand how to treat things. You have to understand your own body, you know, um, but if you do, it is a wonderful testimony to how God has invested his full potencies, you know, through his different agencies, through his different agencies of healing and healing modalities. And it's just incredible. So I find that, I think we all find that the medical industry is so doom and gloom. Basically giving people a death sentence, whether it's five years or one year or six months, that this is just a wonderful affirmation of how your quality of life can improve and how you can move forward even though you may experience a health setback. So, of course, you know, from the time that he had the stroke until the time that he left his body, you know, he had another, he had a very lively five years in there. Very mm -hmm. lively five years where he was able to not only get one book out, but get another book out. It's amazing. And do that more lectures and come to New York and have a wonderful birthday party and go to Yankee Stadium and meet Derek Jeter. And I mean, it's just... It's incredible. So anyway, right. I'll step back and let you continue. What do you think? Germain to that in the remaining 10 minutes that we have, 
I wanted to ask you, what have you changed in your routine? You sort of alluded to some challenges that you might have had with your with your health. What kind of impact has Bernardo's books and this person? Anything you've changed? Anything that you've seen improved? Anything that you're still working on? Well, you hit on uh, a couple of things. Faith, um, and he constantly, constantly talks about it and lives it. Um, the faith part, um, the the part of you know, he literally almost saw on the first page where he talks about I listen to you know what my daddy you know would tell me, and um, that was both um, on his physical father as well as his heavenly father and um he lived it learned it believed it and it just embodied him and so so that kind of cues into as you were talking about uh noticing different body ch changes with your body is listening and and then acting upon that listening um, because every day your body, the universe, God is giving you messages, but a lot of times we get caught up in things, uh, you know, elsewhere, uh, or don't put ourselves as a priority. If we're going to be a priority to help other people, we have to listen and take care of ourselves first. Very true. Is there anything that you've changed? I mean, like, for example, are you doing smoothies now and you didn't do them before? Or are you I do them. something I do. about X? You know, you, you said uh, at the beginning of this conversation, you had said that, you know, you were sort of more into the exercise tip that you were approaching mm. health more from exercise. But you mm. are hinting that perhaps you shifted that, you know, based on Bernando's influence yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. So I would I would say that yeah. So one, um, just in my research for other things that I found that um, that both are important, both the physical as well as the nutrition side, as well as the mental and emotional side, which a lot of people don't talk about, or spiritual side. Um, all three of those things are important. Um, but I actually reduced a lot of the physical side um, as far as um, and I just focus more on the nu nutrition side. So I ate, I changed my diet a lot. Um, I ate more uh, fruits and vegetables, like probably two to three times more. Um, as well as I actually, over time, reduced uh, the types of, of meat and things. So I'm down to fish. Um, and I only do that, you know, so often. Uh, but it's it's really just, you know, fruits and vegetables. So for me, uh, in, in my family, you know, um, heart disease, uh, uh, diabetes, you know, obesity, all of those things, unfortunately, um, are uh, factors. But and they may be a factor in someone else's life. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it will happen to you. Every day that you're given an opportunity to breathe and live is your opportunity to change yourself. Just wondering if there was a lot of canned foods or a lot of salted foods and you've increased your intake of fruits and vegetables so that would seem to imply that that was not something that was big in your family when you were growing up or you know in the past couple of generations it seems to me that you're saying that your grandparents or maybe your great-grandparents if you have an aunt you know that has lived longer so it seems there have been dietary changes you know over the course of time you know now we've got these big box supermarkets and things of that nature where i know in my grandfather's day you know i'm sure in your great aunt's day and before there may be in a general store but there weren't 
boxes and boxes of cereals and people weren't marching down aisles. I mean, people were getting their food from the land, they're getting it from their neighbor, they're getting it from roadside food stands, they're growing it themselves. Would that right. be the case? I would say that that was a factor. I mean, like in the beginning, you know, um, uh, my grandparents, they had um, both up here in uh, New York City, as well as, you know, down south, they had, you know, a little bit of land, not, you know, not a lot, but they were able to just do just grow some some basic vegetables and things like that. So th there's certain memories that I have with that. Um, and then, you know, um, growing up with my, my mom and everything like that, uh, she uh, was also an advocate, but as life happens and as your finances happen, um, you have to sometimes shift things. You know, you can't always uh, eat the same things that you would like to or have access to certain things. And so, um, you know, that was just the reality of what, you know, we had to deal with. And then, um, you know, I was a young man and I was starting on my own. And so you do what's what you know and do what's right around you. Um, you go to work and you're kind of in this cycle and uh you go to fast food places and so forth and um but i kind of you know uh changed that you know and again he was very inspiring and then just the, the daily dedication it, it it was if you read both of the books and watch the videos a lot of the stuff is very very simple but it's just doing it that's the main thing i mean literally just doing it and, and, and on, on a consistent basis, you know. As if Fernando has inspired you to take what you've learned and to create some kind of impact out in the world. You're involved, it seems, in uh, farmers markets and, and fruit produce stands and something to do with the youth. I know youth was a big concern. Bernanda was very worried about our youth. Could you tell us what you're up to? Sure. So I work for an organization called Grow NYC. No. The largest provider in, in New York City of farmers markets and so forth. And basically the mission is to protect uh, farmland uh, from overdevelopment to, uh, to help give access to farmers so that they can provide local uh, in-season produce. And then um, on the other hand of that, to provide access to all people, regardless of income or wherever you come from, just to get some basic um, high, high quality food. You know, so your, your, your station in life shouldn't dictate what you should have access to. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really fortunate to, to be part of that. So the green market is our, uh, the largest part of that program. And then we have other models within that. So we, um, we partner with, uh, you know, different daycares, institutions, um, hospitals, um, for wholesale bulk to, you know, to do that. Um, we have a, a CSA share model, but you're not locked into a, a full season. You can buy it pretty flexibly. And then we have a youth development model, which is what's known as a youth market. Um, so, and that's a, basically a condensed version and it's a, a farm stand that's operated by community youth. So not only is the food local, but so is our youth and where we have impact where, so we, you know, have these micro sites throughout the five boroughs. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. That's really great. So with youth market, what, one of the things that is, inspires me because just in, in general health education education health and um our youth are important to me and so i um i'm able to share with them how to build a small business um customer service communication skills um as well as food and nutrition because a lot of times um we're dealing with uh 15 16 17 you know young young teens and this is their first opportunity um, so you also have an opportunity to impact them far, far down the road, um, just from something simple. And then you're, you're by the, through the power of food, they're trying things that they might not have had access to or wouldn't normally try um, at, at an earlier age. So you're getting ahead of the curve a lot earlier. That's 
wonderful. Good food instead of cigarettes and drugs and all that type of stuff. You know, a connection with nature, with themselves, with their community and science. You know, it's like growing food is, is fascinating. All the things it takes to grow food. That's wonderful. Mm. So, Greg, I'm, I want to thank you uh, so much for being with really us today. I want to commend you and thank you so much for getting involved with the kids. That was a big concern of Bernando's, and I he talked about it so much, you know, the last couple of years. And he just said, you know, and he mentions it in the book, Age Less, Live More, about childhood diabetes. You know, so many kids having stage two diabetes by the time of the age of 10, just because they don't have access to exactly what it is you're helping provide. Any uh, closing thoughts? Anything you want to say? No. Uh, again, just thank everybody, for, you know, whether you're watching this live or watching this at, an, at another time, thank you for taking the time out to even view this. Um, you know, definitely post comments if you've had any connection with Bernando um, uh, or, you know, uh, what, how is the books? I would encourage everybody to um, get uh, the book, both books for yourselves, as well as purchase a couple of copies for friends and neighbors that you know. Um, to help to get the message out and more importantly to actually do what's inside of the book on a daily basis even just a little bit at a time because i didn't actually start my health journey um overnight i just did it a little bit over time so it's not overwhelming and uh you know i would just say uh as he would say keep your colon clean and your liver clean all right all right well yay we made it happen this is great thank you so much thank you for going through all the technological challenges we did it and until the next time, Greg, have a beautiful day, man. Thanks a lot, Care. Thanks a lot. You can get Bernando's first book, Age Less, Live More, on lulu.com. You can get his first book, now available in Spanish, on lulu.com. You can get his second book, Beyond 100, on lulu.com. And you can get his second book translated into Portuguese on lulu.com. In celebration of his birthday, 20% off on all printed books until August 24th. Exclusively on lulu.com. Hey everyone, this is Greg Scott, uh, just saying hello. I'm here in beautiful Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, just saying hello and uh, reminding everybody to have them eat your fruits and your vegetables. Uh, today I'm in uh, the community garden and also working with our CSA program. Uh, but eat your fruits and vegetables every day, drink your water, definitely take advantage of uh, mindful meditation and just getting a walk out. Um, you can sign up and get more information about uh, the products you see on this page. You just click the link below. Um, as uh, And also, as remind you, as Grandpa would say, keep your colon clean and your liver clean. And, uh, yeah, have your shakes. Uh, don't forget to get the books and everything like that. And share this out with a friend. Thanks a lot. Take care.